I got to tell you, right? So, I played a little bit of football with you. Not a ton. Not all four years, right? But one of my high school highlights in my short football career, all right, was not – I was actually a pretty good little JV player, <laughs> right? But – Moral got a little upset with me for not going on any further, but I was going to be defensive back. And I had a few picks, right, in my early days. Those were not my highlight favorites. My favorite highlight was during drills one day. We were laying on our backs. Yeah, I remember that. And I flipped them to turn around, and I ran in the end, and I spun off you, and you didn't tackle me. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I just got around Matt Dubuck. Well, I was right. a, and I then, was a then we back. did it again. We matched up again, and then you got the better of me. And I was, was a running off. back, man. I wasn't uh, a tackler. Never liked that part of the game. Yeah, but you, but yeah. you made me pay for it the next, on the next <laughs> yeah, go around. Probably. So, yeah. Well, those were good days. I'll tell you what. You know, it seems like a, a lifetime ago. When I, I went to graduate school at West Texas a and and I had a professor. His name was Mick Stevens. Mm -hmm. And he came in the first night of graduate school, and I had – already graduated from Texas Tech. I had played pro football in Canada. Mm -hmm. And then I'm at gradu graduate school, West Texas A&M, and he said, um, you looking around the room, and I always sat in the back, of course, mm -hmm. but I'm sitting in the front, and I see this guy walk in, and about 6'4 guy, about 55, 60 at the time, maybe a little bit older, and he said, I'm going to tell you about me. And he said, uh, I've been in the Army. I was a teacher at Texas Tech. I became a superintendent in Amarillo. I went back to Texas Tech as a, as a uh, I don't know, he was in charge of a department. And then he was basically finishing his career at West Texas A&M, and he was in charge of the graduate program. So I'm sitting there, and I'm listening. But he, he talked about the different lives that he had mm -hmm. led. And it always struck me of different lives. And, I, you know, high school and football participating in it was a completely different life for me than coaching it and teaching today and then obviously being a husband and a father that is football when you play is a, a very selfish game mm -hmm. because it's all about getting bigger faster stronger performing and then as a coach you're wanting everybody else to get bigger faster stronger coaching I don't I don't work out like I used to. I don't do those types of things anymore like I once did, but I'm promoting it within 125 kids in our program. And I'll never forget, you know, Mick Stevens was probably the second class that I had because I wasn't sure I was cut out for graduate school. I mean, that's, you know, I took the GRE, did okay. You know, I was a mediocre college student, got a degree, but I wouldn't say I turned the world on fire. And I was kind of concerned, like, am I going to be able to do this? And he stops me the second class. He goes, are you the same guy that played at Tech? I said, yes, sir. He goes, uh, you're a good player? I said, don't thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, from that point on, I felt like he knew me, but he took an interest in me. And I ended up having two or three more classes with him, and we always communicated. And – as a teacher today, I always start my classes, and he started the class by saying, I expect everybody to get an A. Mm -hmm. And it made me feel so much better as a student at the time. So when I start my classes as a teacher, it's, that's my expectation, is our kids that take our classes, the teacher should expect you to get an A, not the other way around. And, you know, there's some people that are impactful people in your life at one time or another. And this guy, I didn't see him for very long. It was a two-year window. But there's a lot of things that he was like that I am as an educator today and then ultimately as a coach today. Yeah. It's and good to have influences like that. I mean, and you definitely take them with you when you move on to your, I don't even want to say career, but your life path. You know what I mean? And people to have, you know, those mentors and those people you model yourself after. It's so important to the to the groundwork that gets laid i want to take a moment here to formally introduce you to, okay. our, to our audience so um we're here today with a good friend of mine um and an accomplished athlete and coach um matt dubuck um cardinal gibbons class of 92 welcome to connected by water Thank presented you. by joey cardi chrysler dodge jeep ram and fueled by papa's pilar rum reminds you never to be a spectator matt 
I've been we've been talking about doing this episode for the longest time, and I'm so happy that you're here today because it allows us the chance as a show to expand our format, being the community presence that we want to be, right? And bringing on someone like you who instills the values and the moral composition that we believe in so much on this show um, about the fabric of the community and what it takes to lift people up and um, grow where you're planted and raise those around you to be not only um, better men and women, but just um, just to excel as much as they can. And if, if I'm articulating that you know, properly, and you certainly are a big influence of that because you just led into that easily for me. You put a softball up for me mm. about talking about someone who's a mentor to you and instill those ground, um, instill that groundwork and put that, you know, foundation into you. Well, you're doing that on a daily basis to people around you all the time. Well, you know, here, here's the thing. And, you know, this year been such a tough year, obviously, with no school, then hybrid school. And I, I reflect back to our kids a year ago that didn't get recruited the way they should have because there was no recruiting at that time. We didn't know if there was going to be a season. Then there's restricted season, and then we finally get an okay to do it. And there, there's a whole group of kids that have been laying in bed, not being able to functionally get what high school is supposed to give them. And you and I are connected by a great high school that um, gave us the opportunity to what you just said, branch out, be who we are, but also still stay connected after 25 years or 30 years. Uh, we're all in different places, but, you know, we respect one another. And obviously I look around this place here, you've done very well. And your talent lies in so many other ways than the talents I have. But my respect for your talent is something I learned a long time ago about respecting what everybody does well. You know, just because you can't throw a football a mile doesn't make you any less than a man or a person or a friend because you can't do that. Mm -hmm. And then I look around. I can't do what you do. Like, I don't have that talent. My wife could do something like this, but me personally, I can't. So looking at this stuff is really puts – it's an awe for me to look at it and go, this is what you do. And uh, you've been able to do a great job taking your talent and then manipulating that into a, a career. And one of the things that I think really is so great about, and I try to explain this to people, and really, unless they have went there, it's hard to really understand it. I say Gibbons is a family. It wasn't just a school. It wasn't just a place we went to and went for four years and got it out of there with a high school degree. And that's evident every day. Um, to where our alumni just kind of keeps and has stuck together all these years and you, you don't see someone for years and it's like you can pick up on, on day yep. one and that's just really the culture of that organization and, and, and the way they do it, like the Gibbons way, yeah. whoever you want to call it, and that's just how it is and it really bleeds out um, into our daily lives um, all the time you know, and, and you know, it, it's really tough to, to explain it. I don't think just a regular high school is like that. Well, I, you it's know, like I, a fraternity or a sorority. You know, yeah, it's, it's, and you're I, I all coached, family members. I coached two years of college football, and I got to travel around the state of Texas and recruit, and um, <clears throat> walked into some really cool places and saw some really good teams and some really good players. But as I was working and recruiting and coaching in college, something always brought me back here. Mm -hmm. It was just like a, you know, that calling, that weight, and Coach Morrill gave me an opportunity to come back and coach, and Mr. Ock hired me as a teacher, and 18 years later, I'm still there, you know, six years now as the head coach, and um, it's been a, a fun ride, and I'm coaching my teammates' sons now, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. I'm coaching my own two sons now, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so so your your kids are doing pretty good. I have right. one one that's been uh, on varsity since his freshman year. He's a long snapper, which is something that most people don't really catch upon in a game. Mm -hmm. They just think it's automatic. But those kids work extremely hard, and it's a talent. And it, it is definitely part of the specialist crew. Mm -hmm. And you don't know that as a coach until you don't have one, right? right. You don't, Or a kicker. When you don't have those guys, you're like, oh, no. 
but when you got them, you take them for granted. Mm-hmm. But like my son also snaps for the punt, for the punt, and I'm probably the the coach that goes for it the most. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he's not, like, he's we might, always mad at you. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> why didn't we punt? I'm like, because we're going to first down. Why didn't we punt, Dad? I really wanted the punt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I, I'm the offensive coordinator, so I call the plays. So it is a direct. Oh, you are calling all the plays. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And it is a direct, you know, correlation to. You know what we do on offense to what we do on special teams, and you know Dave Montiel, which went to Gibbons, mm-hmm. which you know well. He's our special teams coordinator, and you know we're on the headset like we are today, and he always looks at me. What are we doing? You know, yeah. What are we gonna yeah. do here? And nine times out of ten, I want to go for it. Right. If it's manageable, I think we can get it. I think the stats in your favor. You know, there's been studies. Yeah, um, but it all depends on what you do offensively. If whether or not the stats – stats to me are – Coach Marino used to say stat, stats are for losers. Yeah, he yeah. That he, he was his big he, yeah. That was his big thing. And I think today football has become such a analytical game. Mm-hmm. You know, like maybe Joey Accardi is doing his analytics when he's going out fishing and, you know, this time, this area, mm-hmm. this, you know, day. And that's all – plays part in, in into being successful and I think the analytics are good but there still has to be a feel that's in here that you got to trust baseball's much, like that too I think just as much of the, the numbers. numbers too much with baseball just as much of the numbers and I you know we went for it we played in the state championship this game first drive of the game we're down seven nothing we're on our own 50 mm-hmm. it's fourth and three I'm going for it we didn't get it and uh, I went for it Mm-hmm. And, you know, everybody's expecting you to, you know, march the punter out there. And people might say, well, your kid's a snapper. Why don't you, you know, listen, man, I'm here to win. You know, I'm uh, telling you, like, just my, I mean, obviously I defer to you, but I'm of the mindset. I'm a very, just so you know, I'm a very good football watcher, just so you know. <laughs> I am the best at watching football. No, I'm of the mindset that if you're on the other half of the 50, or even right around the close to the 50, Go for it every time. That that's like because the way I look at it is, you you can't always say, oh he tried, but why did he try? You know you can't like fault anyone for trying if right. the field's in your favor. Well, it all goes. It's not to, like you're on your own thirty or anything. It all goes to this, Dennis. It's personnel. Mm-hmm. If you feel good about your personnel, and you don't feel good about their personnel. Then it's a it's it's a no brainer. You go for it. Mm-hmm. If personnel is equal. Then you look at yourself and say, "What do I have here on fourth down to get the first down?" So now you're still going to go for it. When their personnel is better than your personnel, and you're not confident in your personnel, that's when they that's when you punt. Mm-hmm. When you're in that 50 yard area. Two three years ago in 2000 2019 two years ago I guess. We lost in the third round of Booker T. Washington, and I punted on our 50 three times. And we pinned them down deep. We ended up losing the game with two minutes to go. And I always think back. I went against what I usually do. Mm-hmm. But I felt good about our defense. I knew our defense was going to hold. And sometimes feeling good about your defense or not feeling good about your defense matchup-wise – will also influence that decision. So, you know, we get on we get to work on Sunday morning at eight o'clock in the morning. We work till about twelve, seven days a week during the season. Mm-hmm. So I I know when I leave what's gonna be good and what's not. What they got, what I have. And then I start making my deductions off of that and then I use the analytics to go along with it. But you'll be in a game and you'll look in a kid's eye and you'll know, man, he's locked in. Let's mm-hmm. give them the ball. Give them the ball and uh, throw it. Or, you know, we throw, we run the air raid. We throw it 80% of the time, but we run it too. Yeah, you really did bring, you changed the landscape of, of the entire program for sure. For those that, that are watching and listening that don't understand who I'm talking to, okay? So Matt and I went to high school. We graduated together in 92. We played football. I played football for a little bit with him. Um, it was an honor to do so. I always remember the first day showing up the freshman year. I'm seeing you just run lights out against varsity <laughs> players. And I remember one big varsity guy going, yells over to Coach Marino, hey, Coach, is that our new running back? 
And then Marino uh, trying to like stand his ground, you know what I mean? Not not to give it to you, but you could tell. You could tell with you right off the bat. Um, but you went on to have a great career. Um, played for Texas Tech. You wanted to play professional football in Canada. You, know, you alluded to that mm-hmm. earlier. I just want to make that clear to everybody. Um, and then you came back home. I mean, I'm sure a lot happened in between that. You came back home to Gibbons to coach uh, where it all started. And – you brought home back-to-back state titles, right? No, not well, back-to-back. We won in 18. We got to the third round in 19, lost to Booker T. That's Washington. That's the Booker T one. Which eventually won the state championship right. a week later. And then we won last year in 20. Right, so there was a yeah. year in between. There was a gap, okay. yeah. You won two state titles, right? And not only just that, but a lot of success that led up to those moments as well. 52 so and 10 in five of, years. Si- yeah, so yeah. Take me through some of that from, from when you first came in, what that was like, and what you kind of did to transform the program. Well, Because we're all very proud yeah, of you. We're well, all very proud of that, what you've accomplished. You know, Mike Morrill is our athletic director now, and he's certainly made my job a lot easier as the head coach. But he mentored me along the way. You know, Mike, very stand-up guy, very um, – eloquent speaker and and a guy that did it the right way and did mm-hmm. it for the kids. Now I love coach Morrill. No, and 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 Mr. Ott, you know, uh, again gave, you know, he had to pull the trigger to say we'll mm-hmm. take him, we'll give him a chance and he did. And Mr. Ott and I still have a very good relationship. I would say it was rocky at times, but um the 5 year or 4 years that he was the principal that I was the head coach you know, we had a very we had very good dialogue, and he understood it's about the kids, and that's always was his motto, and so was Mike. And um, the thing that's changed in through the program is the the social media, the marketing, the you know the air raid, the you know the bells and whistles that go along with it, and the 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 numbers. I mean. We put a five foot eleven quarterback at Kentucky. Got a full ride, Nick Scalzo. We, Scalzo, yep. Brody Palhegi won two state championships for us. He's five foot nine, and he's he's going to Western Carolina. Mm-hmm. Um, but this th- kid, Troy, Troy Stiletto, going to Clemson. I mean, between Mike and myself in the last twenty years, I mean, we've put more kids in college, maybe next to the Evil Empire over there, you mm-hmm. know, than than anybody. And um, a lot has to do with the teachers. A lot has to do with the school. And now a lot has to do with, you know, it's like a hamster on the wheel. The hamster gets on, man. We, you want to keep them on. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're completely always trying to re-event ourselves, re-up, re-continue you know, continue and um, push forward. And a lot of sacrifices go into that. Like I said, seven days a week. You know, my own son's going to the Florida State camp. I can't take him. I got to stay here because I have a hundred kids that are going to be lifting here mm-hmm. that I need to be at. So, you know, you make sacrifices, and um, thank God I have a, a a good group of coaches and a and a a good family that helps me do my job at a high level. And and uh, you know, I want to keep it going. You know, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd like to keep it going for as long as I can, but. You know, we'll see. You know, you get into a situation where the vision has to match across the board, you know. And um, I think for a long time, you know, we wanted to get there. And, and then, you know, when, when Mike promoted me that offensive coordinator, mm-hmm. I said, put me, send me to school. And I just went around the country to different programs. And I said, all right, I'm going to settle on this offense. Mm-hmm. And we settled on the air raid, I guess, I don't know, 12, 15 years ago. And I can call Lincoln Riley, Mike Leach, uh, you name it. Um, and we can talk football for however long. They ask me what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. You know, what are you doing different? What are you doing different? And um, it's a testament to the players, but to the staff that I have around me. And then ultimately um, our defensive guys, Jack Hanrahan, which has been with us for the last 15 years, Dave Montiel and, and those guys on defense, I don't really have to micromanage them as the head coach. Right. I can let them do their thing. And uh, I can focus on managing the team and then managing the offense. And mm-hmm. that's that's where it's been easier for me as a head coach. Right. Um, 
Wasn't Donnell helping you out for a little bit? Yeah, he he retired, and uh, you know he's got a boy at St. Thomas University, and he's got another one at. Um, uh, geez, now I just lost my train of thought. But he's playing um, at. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we're talking about Donnell Bennett. Yeah, when he, when he was kind of like an idol of ours when yeah, we were playing, yeah, um, he he sure. was the man on campus. Yeah, when we were playing high school football, and he went for the he played both for the of University boys, of Miami Hurricanes and ultimately the Kansas City Chiefs. Both of his boys are playing um, college football, so you know, I think that he's such a great family guy. You know, I think that made him mm-hmm. have to step away from the amount of time that we all put in. Like my two boys, it's have a lot of hours, isn't it? My two boys grew up like. On that field, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, they grew up coming with me to work, you know. <laughs> I'd lose them half the time. I wouldn't tell my wife that, but I don't know. <laughs> where are they? I don't, they're like three, four and two. I'm like, yeah, I think, yeah, they're right here. <laughs> so, you know, you you uh, you make those type of sacrifices, but today I think they're benefiting from it. Sure. You know, and the, the Trey, the older one, he's he's got a chance to – you know, do this at the next level. And, and my other one that's going into the ninth grade, Trent, boy, he's a competitor. Yeah. He's very similar to me. Um, so that's exciting to watch. Similar to you? He, the he ultimate might, competitor? He might. He's, he's got, boy, he's got, he's a, he's a tough customer. Yeah. Now. Yeah. And he, he wants it bad and he works extremely hard. So, but, you know, you mentioned back how the world has changed. And I feel bad because there's such a group of kids, and I tell this to my classes all the time. You come to cl- you come to Cardinal Gibbons, you're going to learn math, science, you're going to learn religion, you're going to learn all the subject matters that are important. But you're going to learn just as much going from A wing to E wing. Mm-hmm. You're going to learn as much going to that game on Friday night, or being a water girl for the JV football team, or being in the band or being a part of the the sack club. And and that's what these kids got robbed from yeah. with COVID. And no, that's 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 so true because going to a school like that really being there matters so much. It it does, man. And and again, you know, it then you then you like kids could come back and they come back for a few days but they're stuck wearing a mask and they're doing an app in the morning about your health app. There's partitions in the cafeteria that glass i mean it's like yeah you know it's not and it's not cardinal gibbons fault because this is everywhere Mm -hmm. but it it has been a it hasn't been as fun i'm not gonna lie to you it hasn't been as fun i mean i had to take temperature checks before every practice if a kid even looked like he had the sniffles i sent him home the fear and Week in and week out, were you going to get shut down because somebody got COVID? Mm -hmm. I mean, when I tell you, it was, and I won't completely appreciate it until I'm out of it. Mm -hmm. The amount of stuff we went through. You know, we've had some really great boosters that paid for our rings, $25,000. We gave every kid a ring on the team, championship ring. Uh you know, like I told you at the beginning, to my buses to Florida State were fourteen thousand dollars. That's just the buses <laughs> there and back. Really? So, because you could only have one kid in a seat, so we had to have oh, four wow. buses. So, you know, everything in COVID cost more, and you couldn't raise any money. You couldn't have fans at the game. You couldn't sell a a, a water or a hamburger. You know, we have Brent Upchurch from McDonald's. That's our mm-hmm. major sponsor. And uh, we couldn't even provide food at a game. Now, what I'm being told is that's all going to change this year. Mm -hmm. And our schedule is packed with really good opponents, home and away. And, uh, you know, I'm just looking to get these kids back to what you and I Mm -hmm. and my wife and her sister and her brother that we all experienced. You know, that, what you said earlier, you know, that experience of – and it's not always good. Let's face it. There's all there's days where it's not. Mm-hmm. But man, we can all look back, and I want that for my own two kids. I want them to have that experience because I had such a great experience, and I've turned down other jobs to stay here, you know, where I could be making a lot more money. But because of the impact that I had from Mike and Coach Marino and Mr. Ott 
and the many countless teachers that were my influence, that's why I'm still here. Well, if you look at it really from that point of view too, um, you know, when I say Gibbons is a family, it's not just the students and, and when we all see each other out at a bar or restaurant and you, hey, you high five, remember this yep. great time in high school, there's a lot more to it than that from a relationship aspect. But also, if you look at the faculty and the staff, it's a very much of a promote from within environment. Right. And that's really what I mean by family because truly that the staff and the faculty there care for those students like they're their own kids. Well, and you should. And whether you are at Fort Lauderdale High or you're at Cardinal Gibbons, you that, totally should. But it really does yeah. happen. It's genuine. Yeah, and and again, listen. There there might be somebody watching this or listening that may say, "Well, I knew him. Yeah, I didn't like him." <laughs> and and that happens because you can't please everybody. Can't please everybody. That's uh, for sure. But again, I would tell you is the thing that makes me continue to do what I do is because of the influences that I had. And, you know, um, the Jack Silers of the world. That Jack's a great guy. You know, we're neighbors and, and uh, you know, the tights and, and those people that bleed red and white. Mm-hmm. Um, Tim Davis, you know, Florida State, you know, Puff, and, and those guys that if you need something, you just pick up the phone. Romanelli, Chris Bowe. Uh, those type of guys that if you if you need something for your program mm-hmm. because the kids need it or to make the program better than than the neighboring program, you pick up the phone. I, I don't. I'm not. I have not been told no very often. Mm-hmm. And working for Mike is the same way. You know, I say, Coach, I need to get this. We just revamped our locker room. It, it's phenomenal. We have LED lighting in there. It, mm-hmm. It's great. He said, hey. No, we wrapped your dugout. Yeah, you wrapped it, the dugout. So yeah. I'm saying, but the, I don't say that to tout us, but I'm saying whenever you ask someone, yeah. if, if anyone gets asked, like, they call me, hey, you want to do this? Like, yeah, we'll do that. Of course we'll do that. And, you and, know? and, you know, to me, that's that's. It's like your brother or your, or your uncle or your, your yeah. mom at calling you up and say, hey, can you do this for us? Of course. And, and I just want, you know, I just want that to continue on, you know, to – whether it's your kids or or even my two boys that they get that experience that I had. And again, I I'm not going to sit here and tell you every day was a you know, a great day because that's not true, but you know, you learn from your mistakes, you don't mm-hmm. repeat them. You move on. And I and I think um you know, if we can do that for our next generation. Mm-hmm. Now they're behind the eight ball. We know that because of this COVID thing. I think pushes push the kids back a few years and they're mm-hmm. going to have to just as they had to learn how to go on zoom they're going to have to learn how to come back yeah and, that's for and, sure and they'll learn that quick though the, I, the, I, I hope so they'll learn it quick I, th- I think kids are resilient i think i think they'll you're come right. back i think they'll come back to that quick you're yeah. right and and you know the 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 resiliency of the team we had a year ago um we had played a team coco beach 10 and 0 mm-hmm. they they were they had beat Everybody by almost thirty points. I mean, their their closest game was Rockledge, which you know, Rockledge a great team in five A, and and uh, it was maybe a fourteen point game. And I remember on Sunday morning going in with my offensive staff, and I go, we watched three games, and I said, oh Jesus, mm-hmm. this isn't gonna be tough this team. Ain't gonna, it ain't gonna be good. Uh, we're gonna have to really play a good game. And I'll tell you what, the whole week. We were locked in, and we ran a trick play. It, it has over, like, 50,000 views on the, the trick play that we ran for a touchdown. We ended up beating them, almost put a running clock on them. Mm-hmm. And uh, probably my most satisfying game of the year because we were – everybody picked against us all year. They picked, Well, St. Thomas, we beat St. Thomas, and right. we were they picked against us. You know, we had oh, yeah, come, by the way, <laughs> you beat St. Thomas. Fun. Good job. And then we came back and played American Heritage, and mm-hmm. that's been a rivalry game the last seven, eight years. And we timed out on the 11-yard line on fourth down. I and remember that. Yeah, and yeah. in a rainstorm, in a rainstorm. and Heartbreaker. It was. After you beat St. Thomas, you, you know, and, and again, it was I my was job. I was watching that. On, I, I didn't go there. I wasn't at the game. I was watching it, though, on the, on the, the internet uh, TV yeah. or whatever. And that was, was that was frustrating, and then – 
I think that game after that, we were played Archbishop McCarthy, and they got a COVID case. So we didn't have a game. Mm-hmm. So then you go into the playoffs. We played Cluiston and took care of them pretty quick. And then you go to Coco, and Coco was a very well-coached team. They had the they had the leading passer in the state of Florida over the last three years. It like was three, an away game? It was an away game. Yeah. Every game, we were on the road. We were on the home against Cluiston. We were at home. And then the rest of the way, we were on the road. Mm-hmm. So we played um, Cluiston, American Heritage, Delray, Coco, and then um, Bowles. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. St. Thomas was a home game? St. Thomas was at St. Thomas. St. Thomas was at St. Thomas. We beat them there. Yes. Yeah. So that there's a softball for you. We're going to play them again this year, which, uh, you know, I thought I'd like to be one and done. And Mm -hmm. I walked away from that deal. But I was pressured in from Broward County to play it again, two state championship teams. So we're we're in negotiations right now to play either at uh, Inner Miami, Mm -hmm. which is the old Lockhart. Yep. Or FAU, and uh, I have a couple meetings this week to to get that. But with fans being back, I think you know that game is going to be a serious draw. I think so. Oh, we I we know couldn't so, we sure. couldn't have it at Gibbons. You know, I I so w- since I've been the head coach, we've sold out of games at Gibbons probably a half a dozen times mm-hmm. at six o'clock, where you, they're not selling any more tickets for a seven o'clock game. And we hold about 2,000 at our place. We we couldn't play St. Thomas there. And mm-hmm. it's on a Saturday night. So, you know, we're going to have a, a larger venue. And for the first time, Gibbons is being considered to play on ESPN, which on my bucket list of things. So proud of you, man. That's one so that proud I'm proud like, of you, man. man. Good job. If I walk out of here and we're on ESPN, win or lose, you know, I can I can say a lot of things. We've won two state championships. We've won a lot of football games, and to put our school and our program on ESPN is going to be um, the, something that I hold as one of my accomplishments. Because you know what we've done over the last five years, going to year six, built mm-hmm. up to this, and uh, you don't sometimes see it until it gets there. Yeah. And uh, I've been talking to ESPN now for probably six months. Talked to them today. And we're in the uh, second half of the conversation Mm -hmm. for them to pick us as a potential ESPN game. Need me to do anything? Put that over the edge? Well, if you know know any execs at ESPN. I'd be like, hey, it's Matt. Yeah, come on. Let me ask you something, right? And this, this might become a personal question. So in 92, we went to States, and we lost to Live Oak. How did that feel? Did that come into your head at all when you won that fa- first state title? Well, it's funny you ask that. <coughs> Excuse me. All good. So <coughs> when I got back there as a head coach, my dream was to get back to the state championship. Mm-hmm. <coughs> and – that was such a crazy season in 18. You know, we were on that QB1 show. I don't know if you've ever mm-hmm. watched that. So we had microphones and, you know, every bra- every practice, every game, so many ups and downs. We played Tampa Jesuit at home, almost got beat at home, but ended up winning that game in a tough game. And we go to the state championship. So I don't know if you know the story, but when we went to play Live Oak in – Daytona, our mm-hmm. bus broke down. Yeah. So we're on the side of a road for three hours waiting on another bus. One bus, by the way, back then in mm-hmm. 90, 89, 90, whatever it was, 90. We're waiting for another bus to come pick us up. So I got offense bus and a defense bus. That we're going to Orlando to play. And uh, the bus breaks down that I'm on. My wife is on the bus with my younger son and my my – the uh, the older one, he's on the defensive bus. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. The game's at, I think the game was at 1 o'clock, and we left at 7.20 in the morning. We were eating a pregame meal at a hotel that I found in there. And, right. we, I didn't want to stay the night for a 1 o'clock game. So you're talking about 
your bus broke down. My bus broke down that I'm on. In 92. or In 92, it broke down that I was on. Right. It took three hours to get another bus. We stayed the night the, the night before. Mm-hmm. We had a 1 o'clock game in, the 80, in 18. So instead of staying in a hotel, getting them out of their beds and causing any craziness, I said, we'll just leave at 720. We'll get to Orlando around 10 o'clock. We'll tape, we'll eat there. And then in the state championship, they only give you like a very slotted time on when you can get into the stadium. Mm -hmm. And then you got to leave when the game's over. And uh bus broke down. And my wife's sitting behind me. She's like, didn't this happen before? So the bus broke down for your first title too? For yes. When your, your yes. coaching title. Yes. That is strange. And she's like, you know, I might have been a little short. You know, at times, and, and I, you know, I wasn't probably as nice as I should have been when I was asked that question. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and that's my fault. But I, it, Well, it was, hey, you know, put yourself back in that moment again. It, it was you, a, you, uh, yeah. you know, it's the moment of truth and then, yeah, come on. So we ended up getting another the bus. The demons start creeping in. Yeah. Right? We got another bus. We got picked up. We got taken to the hotel. We had a, we got there an hour after the defense, we got taped, we ate, and we went to to uh, Camping World Stadium, and <laughs> we played. And awesome. I was back on the bus coming back to the hotel to have a party after the game and back on the bus to Fort Lauderdale that night. And yeah. uh, this time we went up the night before because I'm a little bit smarter now. But, you know, we had a – we had a 1 o'clock or 11 – no, it was like 11.30 or 12 o'clock game. It's better if the bus breaks down on the way back home. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> and uh, we uh, we stayed the night the night before and um, didn't start that game off so well, but we ended up taking over and, and beating a very good job. You guys had a really goals. good, what, fourth quarter? Didn't, uh, you, just start, like, didn't you just start, after, like, pounding at home? After, that, the, after the first quarter, things just – started going in our way and and uh we uh we took them down pretty pretty good and i felt like they were a very good team but i didn't think they were going to be able to hang the whole time and and uh they're going to probably be the team if we're fortunate enough to get there again probably play them again I think so the way the way the regions and the new classifications came out word on the street is the class this year is off the charts you know, I, I never thought we'd have as good a defense as that we had in 2018. Mm -hmm. This defense could be better. We yeah. have a kid named Mason Thomas that just took an official visit to Iowa State. He's going to Pittsburgh on the 24th. Is he going to get the helicopter going to come visit him? You know, th I, we'll see if Alabama jumps in late, but right the, now. The helicopter is Nick Saban. Yeah, That's we've had nickname. Saban two times on the helicopter, but uh, we've got some pretty big interior guys yeah and our secondary is going to be awfully good so as the offensive coach i just got to make sure i don't mess it up you yeah know, make sure that we don't turn it over we have a couple really good quarterbacks really good running back our offensive line is a, is a is probably where we're re, young re no not necessarily young but guys that like we had two two starters that both are going to fau from a year ago Okay. And uh, we were replacing these two guys. The center went to a school called Wittenberg, which D3 school, which is an awesome place. And uh, he's a great kid. We're going to miss his leadership. And then um, the left side of the line is back. So we got to replace the center, the right guard, and the right tackle. And um, Nice. Well, that was a strange story with the bus breaking down, right? So we're going to segue that into our Papa's Pilar strange questions. Okay. Right. And I'm going to do a little Facebook Live right now. Right, and we we're going to ask um, for it, but you can go ahead and keep telling me your stories. But I'm just going to lead this in, right, and put you on the spot here. Like we are live with Coach Matt Dubuck, right, and we're asking for some strange questions here uh, for people to ask. We are at the studio. There's Justin hanging out. We're recording the podcast, and Matt is here with us now. So we are just going to let you guys in on this little um, moment with us, and we're just going to keep talking. So. About, but ask some questions for Matt, right? We're going to see if we can get that done today. So tell me about tech. Uh, yeah. I went to, oh, he's a Texas boy. But. Yeah, I went to Ole Miss, okay. uh, but then I moved directly to to uh, Texas uh, after that. Austin? But, no, I was in Dallas. Okay. And uh, still got a house there and everything. But um, 
you know, I had a lot of friends from Tech, and they actually have a really good art school there. Texas so, Tech does? Uh-huh. I, yeah. didn't know, I did not know that. They do, believe it or not. And uh, far excelled, I believe. Over yeah. This, where I got you ever talk to Zach Thomas? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. He's yeah. supposed to come in on the show. I say supposed to. Justin knows him, apparently. And he, he's trying to contact. get him on the show. You can call him. I'll get so him. So how did you go from, you grew up here? Yeah. Went it's, to Cardinal Gibbon. Oh, that, so, yeah, so, so, yeah. You, so everything is very different out in West Texas, you know. Certainly is. And not uh, a lot of water out there. No. No. <laughs> you know what they say. Where uh, is Texas Tech? West Texas, Lubbock. 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 Yeah, the Red Raiders. How is that, like, going from here to there? You, you know, I was on the water yesterday, and a boat went by, and it was called Options. Uh-huh. And that was the I've only seen. option I had. <laughs> <laughs> it's a and good I, option. And I took it. Okay. And it was actually, I had a preferred walk-on spot at Old Miss at the time. Really? And Texas Tech came in and offered me a scholarship. And You graduated in 92? From Cardinal Gibbons, I did, and uh-huh. graduated from Tech in 97. Okay, yeah. So when you say options, I had option. Option. And uh, I took it and struggled my first year. Being from South Florida, dad had a restaurant, worked a restaurant my whole life. and uh, Those college coaches were easy compared to Marino, right? Uh, I hate to tell <laughs> I'm you that. I'm just kidding. I had the guy that was my boss. Uh, I'll tell you a funny story about that one in a minute. But, no, it was they good. They tell you get on the stick. He, no, he yelled at me. I can see every gold tooth in his mouth, though. Yeah. Yeah. And he – uh but, yeah, it, w- it was a great experience. One of my best friends still to this day, we have a chat for from our group of friends. And, you know, we you know I, we have a doctor, uh, orthopedic, that's in Dallas, Field Scoville. Uh-huh. Glenn Scherler was my roommate for four years. Uh, yeah. He's uh, – a big time banker in the state of uh, Colorado. Okay. And uh and guys that, you know, we were always the underdog guys, you know, but maybe that's why we're still close today, but you know, we weren't four-star guys or five-star guys. You know, we were guys that worked extremely mm-hmm. hard and paid the price and did the the grunt work to get on, you know, make the travel squad and then play and yeah. and then uh, you know, um, I was yeah. just trying to think of games back then because you know, I, I graduated high school in 95. So, you know, you guys would have been just about three years ahead of me. And I was just trying to think of who our, you know, we had like Stuart Patrick and uh, just trying to think of the players we had back then. At Ole know. Miss. Yeah, at, at Ole Miss. So I'm just wondering who. Uh, so who, you were SEC. We were. Yeah. Fun, no, exactly. fun, fun fact, I played in the first Big 12 game ever. Okay. Played against Kansas State because we were the Southwest Conference. Right. And then right. we, when we transitioned yes. the Southwest Conference and the Big Eight or whatever it was moved together and it became the Pac or Big Twelve. We played K State my senior year um, in the first Big Twelve game. Okay. Joey Cardi asks, uh, uh, "Why was he the best player to ever play at Gibbons? And, and uh, or who was the best player to ever play at Gibbons? Why is it Joey Cardi?" <laughs> Why isn't it Joey Cardi? <laughs> Why is it Joey Cardi? No. It's not Joey you, Cardi, but he who, might be the best card dealer. Who do, who do you think? Who do you think? And um, fisherman. Who do you think? Like, if you had to say in in the time, like, who do you think? I know there's been a lot of great players to come through our halls. Who do you think is the best Gibbons player that of we've all had? time? Jeez, so many good players. Donnell's got to be up there. He's up there. Of, co- of course right? he is. Uh, you know, we had a kid, Vincent Davis, that's a starting running back at Pitt now. Mm-hmm. He's pretty good. Um, yeah, I would say Donnell's got to be in that conversation. Yep. You know, Dave Montiel. I mean, Dave Montiel for sure. Yeah, I mean, Vince certainly. Powell back in the day was, Vince Powell was, was, was off the charts, right? was as good as anybody anywhere. Um, Chris Bogle, mm-hmm. you know, that's starting at Florida now. Uh, and I hate to say I go back to the guys I coached, not to the guys I played with. Right. But, um, we've had some really good. Whoops. Feedback. So, so we've had some really good ones. I mean, I, I just can't. Mike Morrill, John I'm Chikorotis. just picking your brain. Yeah, I mean, those you, guys you, there's be been, We've had some really, really great players, I mean, come through the halls over the years. But one I'm really excited about is this kid, Troy Salato. Oh. Uh, Jeez, I didn't even mention him. I he's, mean, he's going to be a stud, right? Did, would he, didn't he go to – he pretty much had his pick of any school that he wanted to Nick go to, Saban right? flew in on a helicopter yeah. to see him. he chose Clemson, you know, He chose right? Clemson, which I think is a – I think they really like Dabo Sweeney. And, I like and, that uh, program yeah, he runs. And I, Troy is – boy, 
as good a hands as I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Competitor, fearless across the middle. Um, he made a catch against Coco where the ball was thrown on a 10, 12-yard out, left hash to the right side. He caught the ball at his ankles with his hands. You just don't see that every mm-hmm. day. He yeah. didn't slide. He didn't do it. He, he caught it with his hands. And uh, what a player, man. What a competitor. Um the one thing I would say, <clears throat> the unfortunate part of what you're doing, the fortunate part of what you're doing versus the unfortunate part of what these kids are dealing with is social media. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can go from being average to good just on your, your posts. You know yeah. what I mean? And I, that's a big fight that we always have with our kids. And, and They're you know, all trying to play that game, huh? They're like all these camps. The NCAA just opened all the camps up. And I say, I told our guys, before you go to a camp for exposure, be careful that you don't get exposed. Mm-hmm. If you're not ready, you run that forty, you do that that shuttle, you do, you know, you go on one on one, and work you against don't, you. you don't perform just as fast as you you think it's going to help you. It's going to hurt you. So you're saying social media posts. Football related, though. Fo- football yeah, related can, can work against you. Can work uh, against you big time. And then, and, you know, and then. Like know. the one famous post from Troy is the one where he's got the one where he's Slaps the slapping ball the dude off him. And, and yeah, that, that I, really kind of, like, helped him because yeah, that was a great video. Because ESPN picked that up. Right, right. But, again, that's not what we teach. But that's no, not. For sure. But my point in bringing that up is for every video like that, there's going to be a thousand that aren't going to be that. Right. And, right. and, so and so don't gonna, try to do that. That's just kind of happened. So, like, our, I'll use our kid Mason Thomas. I look at this kid. He's a defensive end. He's a stud. Four five forty, two hundred twenty 220 pounds. I thought he was 6'4". Well, he goes to a camp. He gets measured at 6'2". And I'm like, did you really need to go to that camp? Mm-hmm. You're getting recruited by everybody. So you go to that camp, and all of a sudden, now you're a 6'2 guy. So maybe Alabama looks at that and says, we're not going to put money into a 6'2 guy. But if you look at his body of work, he's an Alabama player. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, do you want exposure or be exposed? I, I, I can't answer that question. I was always undersized and underweight and all those things. My, I let my body of work speak for itself, but what would it have been like today? Yeah, I'm would so I've, glad we didn't have to worry about social yeah. media, even in college. Like just the things we did and, you know, just YouTube and mobile devices. I'm just so glad that these kids have, have that to put in their calculus too, man. You know, the crazy thing yeah. is, is, you know, I'm not, you know, unfolding and unwrapping any presents here when I tell people you're not the biggest guy in the world, right? And Neither that's coming from a guy that's smaller than you, I know. right? But I'm looking at it from a football perspective, right? You were an off-the-charts phenomenal football player in high school. And I mean that. And you can't deny that when I say that. Please don't try to sound humble. Let me just say that, okay? Because you were off-the-charts phenomenal football player, right? Had you been a little bigger, likely been a professional football player in the NFL, like I think like that right i really do believe it and, and don't take offense to that if i said that to offend you don't take that the wrong no, way right not at all. because i think you were that that good really i mean and and i want to make that clear if any of your players are watching this now too right well, I, I want I, them to know and they probably do know i and appreciate you, they, that they probably heard it but, but y- matt dubuck was an incredible incredible football player i i don't know if and I baseball would've... player too I did play baseball I and don't hockey know if, I, and hockey i don't know if i would have gotten the same opportunity in 2020 that I got in 1992 because everybody's so fixated on height and speed and size. I, well, I guess that's kind of my point in bringing that up, right? So, so but, but you did end up making, like, Texas Tech noticed yeah. it, right, a, of how great of a football one. player. One. Right, and it you made one. the best of it. I made the best of it. I got a degree. I got lifelong friends. Mm-hmm. Listen, I, I want to be at Cardinal Gibbons forever. If Car- if Texas Tech called me up and said, hey, we want you to coach the running backs or the receivers or whatever, it'd be tough for me to say no because mm-hmm. who I am today is a, has a, a, a direct relevance to my experience at Texas Tech. Mm-hmm. So I would love my son, one of my sons to go to Texas Tech. 
because I would relive my past through him. But, you know, if they don't recruit him, they don't recruit him. I'm mm-hmm. not, you know, I can't make them do it. And it's a different time. It's a different place. And It is a different time, right? And you bring up social media, and that plays a big effect with these kids' heads. I mean, not only just in football, but just in life in general. It's a different it's a different landscape that we're dealing with. Jeez, I, the I, way I, they recruit these kids is completely different than they the, the way they recruited them. Before back then, probably you're just relying on Coach Marino to pick up the phone and say, "Hey, That's you it. want you want to check out this kid? He's really good." That was so it. You're relying on your coach to make that call. Now they got all these two, four, seven sports ratings Rivals and all the different and, things. You're yeah. a three, you're a four and a half, you're, you're a five star, or whatever. Now they're rating all these kids, and then whether you want to be rated or not, you know what I mean. You're getting yeah. ranked, and it's a completely different process than what you and I were used to when we played, right? How do you feel? I, and and if you don't want to answer this, you don't have to answer this, right? If you don't, you know, if I'm putting you on the spot, just deflect it completely. But Chip Lamarca really helped put forth this bill to get college athletes paid. Chip and I talked about it. Are you 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 for this, or are you against it? I'm for it personally, just so you know. I, I like the fact that he's pushing this through. I think it's beneficial for the kids if managed the right way. But I can understand if you might have a different point of view on it. You might have a different perspective on it. You definitely have a different perspective on it than I do. Well, I'll tell you this. What's your thoughts on that? You know, it's a tough question. When I went to college, all you heard the, your coach say was, we're paying for you to be here. Mm-hmm. You know, I play. I walked on the baseball team. I made the baseball team. I started for a year and a half, second half of that year. We're going into spring football, and he says, uh, you're not starting, are you? And I said, no. He goes, well, we're paying the bills. You need to be at spring football practice. We're paying the bills. He's right. Baseball didn't give me any money. Football did. I basically went to the baseball coach, and I said, thank you. It's been fun, but if I'm not starting, I've got to go back to football. That's what I did. These kids, their time, you sign a sheet every week, 20 hours. It's a rule from the NCAA. A 20-hour the rule week is where you, your meeting times, your practice times, you can't exceed 20 hours. It's an NCAA violation. So now we're at the 20 hours a week. You really get one day off, but that one day off, every kid's in the office watching film because it's not mandatory, wink, wink. You better be in there. If you have goals of being the starter or playing at the next level, you better be doing everything you got to do. You got classes, you got tutoring. Where in the world are these kids going to have time to develop a brand? And A, in your business, you know how hard it is to develop a brand. What are they going to do? You know, go buy t shirts for $6 a t shirt and then sell them for 12 And then if they don't sell them, they're stuck with the t shirt. I think the elite players will make money. But I think it's like the power five. You're going to have 20 schools that are making all the money and the rest of them are breaking even or losing money. And and I hope these kids don't get stuck into thinking they're going to college to make money selling a brand. Because if they do, I think they'll get a rude awakening that it's not going to happen. I think that's going to be, you're right, that that is going to be the, the drawdown from it. It, it, is that when it's going to be the rude awakening of it all, right? Is that that's not what it's going to be like? My concern of of it is, I guess maybe it's you can call it a concern, or you can call it what makes me happy, being a, a Florida State fan, and 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 also enjoying watching the Hurricanes and the Gators, um, saying that well, with Florida being on the forefront of doing this and being like and California, they're going to get all the recruits because of that whole mindset. Oh, money, 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 go there. Right, and the other states are going to catch up to it eventually. Don't forget, because there's for, one for thing reason. called the transfer portal. That you may go to that school, you may go to Alabama because you think at Alabama you can be gone to the NFL in three years. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, you're not playing. You're now you're you're going to go into the portal. Mm-hmm. So, w- what's your brand worth? You know. So it it all comes down to the rich get richer and everybody else won't. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of kids will struggle academically because they're spending time trying to sell stuff. You know, are you going to go to a car dealership and get paid X amount of dollars for a day at a car dealership? I don't know how that's going to work. Mm-hmm. But that goes back to, to being what we all grew up with, like, you know, the the money in the McDonald's bag. 
you know, you, at some point in time, obviously college football is a an extreme when it comes to revenue, and it's an extreme. Better than probably not the NFL, but probably not far off because they don't pay the players. Think about this, 85 scholarships, mm. 85. I don't care if it costs 25000 a year to go to that school. You can eat 85 seats in a classroom that cost you nothing. At the end of the day, what does it cost you? It's another name and another Social Security number, 85, in a class. But the value over a four-year period or a five-year period, say it's hundred grand. That's what they sell you on what you're getting. But w- what is the r- true natural value of that? Zero. Mm-hmm. What are they making off of you? A ton. Ton. The TV contracts. Where this all came about was coaches getting these big deals and then two years later signing, you know, signing two classes and then getting a bigger deal, leaving me- you know, Memphis to go to Florida State where he was making $2.5 million, Now he's making five. What happens to the kids that he promised those things to and that experience at Memphis? That's where this all occurred. You know, I give credit to uh, the coach at Iowa State. You know, obviously we had a kid that visited there this week, but he turned down the head job of the Detroit Lions because he said, Iowa State, I'm making this. I'm doing great. I love it here, and I want to see this thing take off. How many guys are going to do that? Yeah, not many. Not many. You know, Matt Matt Campbell. Yeah. And – uh you know, I look at the job that I've done over the years, you know. Lincoln Riley, five years ago, offered me a job. You know, what what would I be making today if I would have took it? More than I'm making now. Would I be as happy? Would I have – I wouldn't be living in South Florida. Mm-hmm. I can tell you that. Um, so, there are things that you look at that you got to decide what's best for you, what's right for you and your family. And, and um, I just think – I'm 48. I can't imagine what a 22-year-old or a 21-year-old with nobody guiding them. I had two parents. Oh, that's tough. Know, um, and I get so mad all the time. Like, one of my players that will sign with a Division One school will call me, and I go, I'm thinking transfer. And I go, why? Grass greener on the other side? Well, the coach doesn't like you? I said, well, the coach won't be there in another year from now. Your mm-hmm. position coach will be gone. So get your degree. Tough it. Stick it out. Get through it. Some listen, some don't. Um, can you help me get to another school? I said, yeah, I'll help you. But my focus is on this next class. I got to get those guys. I already did it for you. Mm-hmm. Now I got to get this group, and then I'll circle back to you. And sometimes they get mad at me. Sometimes they don't. But my job is for the next senior class to get them to school. If you got there and you so choose, you can't get along with somebody, you're making adult decisions that you're going to leave that place. You can also make those adult decisions about making T-shirts or hats or going to a car dealership or going here or going there. And, you know, there are things that uh, two-parent households can't reach kids on, and there's there's things that one-parent household can't. And then when those kids have no guidance – you know, they're looking, they're talking to people that how can they best financially be rewarded? And that's hard. You know, that's, so that's you, hard. You're kind of bringing this back to where we started now. When, when, when I was talking about being a member of that community, raising up the people around you, you know what I mean? Laying the solid foundation within them to make right, solid adult decisions. I mean, that's what you're doing. And I just want to kind of bring that up and reiterate that about you and everything you do in the community because you are the guest on the show. I want to bring it back like that and just kind of explain to people listening and watching um, that the job that you do is more than just X's and O's. It's way more than uh, X's and O's, right? It, it's raising kids, basically, and raising young men um, to be young men. And, and you do a damn good job at it, Matt. You really do. And, you know, I just want to commend you for it. And what I want to just ask you, 
Um, because I'm sure there's going to be some people watching this show that are inspecting you or maybe saying, oh, okay, you know, it's thinking about the program or, or whatever they're going through, or maybe just some people that just want to get more intel on the situation. You know, what would you say to maybe say like a parent watching right now that is looking to say, okay, I want to, my kids got talent. I want to send them to a good program and what that good program is all about and what you do maybe differently than other programs. Well, first off, if, if you're not willing to do the job in the classroom Mm -hmm. and, and sports is first and academics is secondary, it's not going to work. There's plenty of schools that are out there that'll take, kids like that it's our job we'll, and we'll get some kids that say they want to be academically inclined and then they don't show it and then it's my job to remind them of that you came here to get an education first you know sports or whatever you whether you want to go in the band everything is secondary after the education you know as far as parents or whatnot i say here's my body of work we're 52 and 10 we put multiple kids in Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three schools. Uh, we've raised a lot of money because people believe in what we do. Um, I'm not the so- only soldier here. Mm-hmm. Guys like Dave Montiel and and uh, Mike Morrill and and guys like that that have you know that are around and and are part and know the culture of not just Cardinal Gibbons but South Florida. Um, that's what I think makes us a little different. I, when I tell you, hey, I, I sometimes put a tweet out there to our players, hey, congratulations on this, and congr- but now do your homework. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I mean, to me, I wasn't the best student, and because I was so focused on football and baseball, I should have been. And my parents had a business, and, the, you know, they didn't necessarily – you know, threaten me with, if you don't do this and don't do that, you're not going to play. And, and they didn't do that. And today I'm that teacher is like, listen, number one thing is you're, you're here to get an education. And I didn't take advantage of it. Like I should have. Mm -hmm. Um, And even at Texas tech, I went in there behind the eight ball because I didn't. So everything was harder for me academically until I, I got better habits Mm -hmm. study habits I took it more seriously and uh for my own two boys we harp at home man your job is number one school number two football uh because they both play football Uh, and I hope they and they want you know one plays rugby too and the other one I hope does rugby or whatever he chooses to do um but that's to me the the biggest thing is the message that you send out every day has got to be consistent Mm -hmm. And I think over the last six years, and I learned this from Mike, you know, consistency is important, you know, and if the message is consistent, you're not going to win every battle, but you're going to battle in every battle and have a chance to win it, a chance. And I I tell our kids this, I make no guarantees on playing time. What I make a guarantee is you'll have an opportunity. And I think if, if we did more of that in this world, I think uh, our kids would be better off, but it's unfortunate. It is the way it is, mm-hmm. you know. And we're fighting a new system, a new government, a new whole everything. Um, where what is down is up, and up is down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. And it's and those definitely poor kids, a strange world right now. Those man. poor kids don't know what to think half the time. I, you know, I swear, Matt. I mean, it, you know, people always say like, "Oh, if I could only go back." I don't know if I want to go back now. I don't know either. I, I liked the time that we had. I thought, listen, I always tell people I think that's a society we peaked in the 80s. But so you <laughs> listen really to the 80s that. on 8 too, huh? I really do believe that. There's a society we peaked in the 80s. maybe. Yeah, and Nine, then, 92, 93. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, <laughs> seriously, because like, like this, if you look at it from that point on, everything just started going crazy. But... Really, just like we live in strange times. So I, during practice, we play music. Mm-hmm. So the music's uh, – yeah. so I, over the COVID, you know, I'll be in my car You're driving. Flock of seagulls. Kicking. Yeah, so I'm in my car driving. There's a song. <laughs> Man, I like that song. I'll take a picture of it. So I, my video guy, he also does the music for practice. Uh-huh. 
So we're playing 80s. So will you play you're playing music third oh, practice yeah. on, all, on all the loudspeaker? Yeah, oh yeah. All really? the practice. And the kids are looking up going, "What the heck what is, is he got?" I I I was in a mood one day. I was driving, I heard a Beach Boy song, "Round Round Get Around." <laughs> I, I said, "Man, that would be a pretty cool song for practice." So the video guy said, "Hey, make sure this goes on the playlist." He's like, "Really? You're going to put that on there?" So I said, "Yeah, just put it on there." So they played it. And the older coaches, they're like, even the older guys are like, what are you doing? I go, but listen to the lyrics, man. I get around. Yeah, I get her. They're like, no, man, you can't play that. And I said, no, it's staying on the playlist. But It went over like a fart in church. Yeah, huh? it, it didn't go over well. But, you know, I, 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 I expose our kids to different genres of music. It's mm -hmm. just not the rap era right. that they may want to listen to. We'll put a couple rap songs on there, but we're also going to put on some stuff from the at, 80s. These kids, they got nice turf on the field. Oh. They got lights on the field. We didn't have lights when we were there, nope. right? They got music playing. We got a brand new locker room that's phenomenal, state-of-the-art weight room. I mean, it's... I can't remember the name of the kid, right? But there was someone, someone that was on our team when we were playing. Remember those swatches, <laughs> right? Or swatch those like fancy European yeah. plastic watches or whatever, yeah. right? This dude had like seven of them on, right? A swatch, it, huh? Like like seven of them. So you look at him. You look. You're already pissed off. Um, yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> I remember those. They also had the sc the watch protector. So you know, Moral was listen. I love Coach Moral because, like, there was never in my lifetime. I'm not just talking about coaches. Just a person in my lifetime that had the best cut you downs like gotchas ever. He still right? got some. He's like this, he's just like this we're running an offense. He looks over at him. I can't remember the name of the kid's name. He goes, hey, what time is it? <laughs> like that. And, and the kid's like the kid's like, what? What? You don't know what time it is? You got seven damn watches on. He started ripping them. The kid couldn't get those watches off faster. He just started throwing them on the field. Yeah, that, yeah. that was... Uh, it struck the fear of God, though. We're playing... I don't know who we were playing two years ago. We were playing at Douglas. You can't have... You can't wear a shield. So to take the shields off for mm -hmm. the game, take the shield off. The kid goes in with, uh, with a shield. Referee sends him off to me. I'm like... Just a Douglas, you can't do that? No, in the Broward County. You okay. You can't wear a dark shield. Oh, okay. Like, I tell you to check your, your uniforms daily, you know, before we go out, check your stuff, blah, 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 you got a shield. They look at you dumbfounded, like they mm -hmm. never heard it before. And you're like, that's why you're dealing with kids. Yeah. And you can't take yourself so seriously that you, know, you got to remember who they are and their attention span is about – one millisecond and I'm a I'm a parent of two teenage kids and my wife and I correct them all the time and you know oh yeah next thing you know they do the same thing wrong and you just got to remind yourself that's who they are at this age and you can't get crazy over it yeah and sometimes if we're having a bad day we get crazy over it but for the most part you can't and um Listen. I think being a parent makes you a better teacher, makes you a better coach, makes you a better everything, just because you see not just what you have in the classroom on a daily basis or on the field, mm -hmm. but you live it. Yeah. You live it. And teenagers are just different. They're like from outer space sometimes. Yeah. And it's like you're speaking English, but they're, you know, they must think that you're speaking French because they don't comprehend. Did I tell you I'm coaching right now? No. The girls' basketball, my daughter's 10. I'm coaching her team, right? Obviously, it doesn't compare to what you're doing. But I get what you're saying about the not listening thing, right? Because, I mean, just simple set a pick. And they know how to do it. They do it in practice all the time. They get in the game, and you, you like, call a timeout, and you bring them in. Like, all right, here's the plan. This is what we're going to do. And then you go back out on the court, and then it's like you never even spoke to them. And it's kind of fun. <laughs> but we're, we're, we're going to the championship awesome. this week. So it's playoffs this week. So make sure you we won first place for the regular season. Make sure you give them a great pregame speech, man. Because whatever pregame speech you give them, mm -hmm. that's forgotten before the game ever even gets <laughs> close to getting started. <laughs> I love all these guys that rant and rave before a game and pump their fist and they 
make all kinds of names and calls and whatnot. And I said, by the time you leave the locker room, you go out there, you don't want to win the game in the locker room. You want to win it on the field. Yeah. And uh, John Owens, I, I told you about, he gave a pregame speech in uh, Coco. And uh, he's a Navy SEAL, great guy. And uh, they start playing the band when he's given the speech. So he stops when, you know, when they play, and then he starts talking again. They start again. And it wasn't his fault, but it was just mm-hmm. one of the, you know, I got a Navy SEAL here, man. This yeah. is, like, this is awesome. And they, they just, I don't, they didn't do it on purpose, but. Killed the moment. They, they, they just wiped him out of the pregame oh. speech, and you're like, man, I wanted him just to go out there and just, you know, give him the old whatever seals say. I'm sure it's pretty awesome, but I couldn't hear him. Yeah. And uh, after the game, I'm like, great job, John. It was awesome, man. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like. Oh, and you poor wanna, John. Yeah, you want to say, hey, John, uh, you know, the, they, they rang you out of there, you know. But. Yeah. That was the other thing, and I and I, you know, we weren't even we didn't use a locker room one time this year. Oh, really? So I do all my stuff before the game in the locker room, whatnot. And because of COVID, you didn't want to have too many kids in the locker room because yeah. if somebody sneezes and they get COVID, then you're shut down again. So all of our Monday meetings, all of our post practice meetings, everything was done outside, mm-hmm. and uh, that was new for us because everything we've done in the locker room in the past and. And uh, there were just so many adjustments that were made. And and I think in football and and in life, everything is an adjustment. Mm -hmm. You know, you do this, we better be ready to do that. You know, and if you can dictate this, be prepared for your opponent to do that. And um, I think people that can make adjustments on the fly Mm -hmm. are typically – people that have more success, whether you're a football player or you're a student or you're in the car business or you're all businesses the same way, any business. And I look around here and I look at your awesome studio and I, and I say, man, you know, what a great job you've done in a location. Now this location probably in West Texas wouldn't be that popular, but here in South Florida and Pompano, you're in the right place, man. Mm -hmm. And you're going to do well here, but you're smart, but you know, you're not going to sell, you know, snow skis yeah on every corner in Broward County it doesn't snow here you know and I'll use Joey Accardi as an example one probably f- six seven years ago he became a, a, a sponsor for us and he pulled out a yellow legal pad you can ask him this and he drew a, a line or a circle and then he drew a line through the circle and he said hey look everything east of that is the Atlantic Ocean there's no customers there mm-hmm. everything is west we have to market everything west because there's nothing east. And I, I use that model for our own school all the time. You're not going to have many kids living on A1A to retirement or, or uh, you know, uh, condo community. Mm-hmm. Kids typically live in households. So, like, even for Gibbons, how many, t- how many schools did Nick Scalzo drive by to get to Cardinal Gibbons from Parkland? A lot. Mm-hmm. You know, and, you, you, you know, it, that's that model of – doing business which i've learned from guys like joey and brett macy and and uh you know people like that over the years to kind of figure out okay if it works here can it work here can you do this here that you can do over there and um it's trial and error yep just like anything else i mean it's listen i always try to equate listen so in this on this show we try to we believe we bring in the best of the best in this show, but most of the most of that best of the best is in the fishing community, right? But that's just because we are in the mecca of that down right. here in South Florida, right? But I'm also bringing on the best of the best today, because we are also in the mecca of high school football, mm-hmm. right? In South Florida, we we got the talent down here that every college coach wants, right? And you're raising them, and you're doing a great job, Matt. So listen. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it full circle there, right? And and just say that <sighs> we're so darn proud of you. Well, thanks. Because man. of I'm everything sure. that you've accomplished, and it really does does speak to the culture um, that continues to evolve at the Cardinal Gibbons family. And I want to thank you for coming in and sharing your time with us. 
and sharing your insight um, to a lot of that. And, you know, I, I hope to have you in more on the show um, as we kind of, and I just want to just say that we're going to expand this. Um, we talked about this yep. before the show. We're going to expand this to a regular um, part of our show uh, where Matt's going to come on more and bring in some other guests. And we're going to really start putting together more of a round table of sports and the community and what that means um, to this area and what that just means to life in general. And, and we're going to really bring in the human element of things um, to that. Well, I appreciate it. And I'll say this, and I'll end with this. Like you and, and your shop here and the pictures that you've drawn and, and, and done, I'm sure you can call it work, but I'm sure it's not a job. And I can honestly tell you, there's not many days I've w- I've gone to work over the last 18 years, and said it's a job. Right. And I I look at it as a man. There's no other place I'd rather be. Mm-hmm. And you know, if I'm stuck at work f- for two extra hours, I'm with my friends. Yep. You know, and if I'm stuck with my friends at a job that pays me, then I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. So I, I, I think I, as I look around in here, I, I probably we probably have very two similar. Hundred uh, percent. We, we still got to pay bills. We still got to feed our families. We still got to put, pay, pay. You know our car yeah, payments. But make tough calls. Everything that comes with it. You know what I mean. But it is what it is, man. Any anything worth doing has that attached to it. But I would say that I haven't worked too many days. Yeah. In eighteen years. So. That's awesome. I appreciate it, and uh, yeah, I'll definitely get some guys in here. And uh, since you're a Florida State guy, I got a, my buddy coming down, Ryan Bartos, the new chief of oh, staff, nice at Florida State in July. Um, see awesome. if we can get a little Florida State action going for you. That'd be great. That'd be great. Absolutely, hundred percent. All right. Well, I appreciate it. So we want to give a shout out today that if you are um, in the market for a new truck or vehicle. Uh, we want to. We we mentioned his name on the show many times before, and uh, I also have to just, just in general give him a great shout out because you did talk about the ways he supports the school Absolutely. and he supports the community in so many different ways. And I I don't know if enough people see that what Joey does in town uh, for so many people around him. He really does truly give back in a lot of ways. So I'll give are, you a quick one. Yeah, on please that do. One. We we won the state championship in eighteen, and he says to me. Uh, Hey, great job. What are you doing for your staff? He goes, take them out to dinner. It's on me. I said, okay. It's a so typical we went, Joey move right there. Went to there. Cafe Seville in, in Fort Lauderdale on Oakland, and uh, he bought dinner for our coaching staff. And I have two cars. That's a Joey Accardi car out there, and my wife has a, a Jeep Wrangler. And, and uh, you know, I've, I've known him forever and, and just a great guy that, you know, when you ask him for something, and I try not to do that too often because I know what he's going to say, and I don't want to take advantage of friends. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've had some good times, him and I, and, uh, you know, I know he's become this excellent fisherman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he's come to fewer games, but I got to get him back on some Friday nights over at uh, the tight. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, but uh, everything that he does for people, kids, he doesn't look for recognition. He just does it. No, he doesn't. And uh, he doesn't. there's a place for people like that somewhere up top one day that, um, and I think he'll uh, definitely be there. Couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. So, buy a truck from him. Right? 100%. Absolutely. Endorsed. Yep. Endorsed from me. That's That's for sure. And uh, if those of you out there, um, those of legal drinking age, are looking to go out and um, enjoy yourself a nice glass of uh, Papa's Pilar rum, they remind you never to be a spectator. And we are very, definitely very proud to be part of that family. Uh, great uh, group of guys that run the show over there, and they're keeping the Hemingway tradition alive. Um, definitely. Papa's Pilar reminds you never to be a spectator. Also, if you're hungry, check out our good friends at Papa's Raw Bar. Um, they have the Connected by Water Sushi menu. Um, you can order something fun off of there. Um, check out Papa Amigo's restaurant. Um, they're just opening up their location here in the Bailey Arts District, and they have a new location that just opened up in the uh, Coconut Creek area. 
uh, right there near the Coconut Creek Deerfield kind of triangle right there in that corner off 441. Um, and also, we're, we just want to give a shout out to our good friends at Olakai and Maui Jim. We are very proud to be part of those Ohanas. And also, if you are, are uh, in the market for some um, fishing apparel, some performance apparel, you can go check out connectbywater.com or you can go over to cvboats.com, shop.cvboats.com, and check out the line of CV apparel that we designed. Um, that we're very proud of that. D Frio collection over there for CV boats. So uh, cool. Am I leaving anybody out? ACR. We want to talk about ACR, right? Our good friends over at ACR. If you're going out on the water and you have a, you don't have an EPIRB, you might want to just go ahead back into the inlet, pick up one of those, and then head back out. You don't ever want to go offshore without a safety device that you can press one button. And if anything happens, the Coast Guard will come to you without you even having to pick up the phone. Um, so anyone should, everyone should have that. You know, ACR reminds you that they are the science of survival. Um, Justin, am I leaving anyone out here? No, I think we got all our bases covered, right? All right, cool. Matt Dubuck, champion Matt Dubuck. No, man, it takes a takes a village of people to get that done. Yeah, smoking like a true champion. <laughs> so, all Thanks, right. guys. Appreciate you. Your ego is not your amigo, right? <laughs> Always remember uh, to just do your best, and at the end of the day, just let God do the rest, right? And um, don't ever, ever forget that no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, we are all connected by water. Thank you, sir. Thank you.